What's going on YouTube today? We are going to show you guys how to wire up a pressure sensor. Not a super hard task, but a lot of people get a little confused on the wiring, so we're gonna show you guys. I figured out that I have an extra digital in. Why do I have an extra digital in? Well, because as you guys can see here, digital input one wired up the factory speed sensor on the factory S2000 on A9 on the factory harness. Well, I was looking at it and I was like, well, I don't even use VSS anymore because we use two digitals. So we use front and rear wheel, wheel speed. So now that leaves us a digital input. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my bump button, which I have in an analog input. I'm going to put my bump in my digital one. And then I'll have a, where's my bump at? I'll have my analog input eight that I can use for a pressure sensor, which means I can run my crankcase and my coolant pressure sensor because before I thought I was out of inputs and I was gonna have to buy like a CAN bus input thing. I don't have to do that. And I don't think I'm gonna have any other sensors on the car. So this will literally max me out. Like I won't have any others, but having my wheel speed sensors hooked up to my front and rear wheels on my digital inputs, I don't need the factory VSS anymore. So we're gonna remove that. We're gonna depin. We're going to put my bump button pin in my digital input, set up on the ECU so my bump works for that. Then on my analog input, we're going to wire up a pressure sensor to my crankcase. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So here we have my crankcase pressure sensor that I run to the top of the valve cover. And this used to be my coolant, right? Because my coolant is under here which I have nothing in. So basically I had to decide, did I want to log crankcase or do I want to log coolant? So I had to keep flipping that back and forth. They're the same sensor, they're both 75 PSI sensor, but I really want to log both. And finally figured it out that I can. Just gotta do some wiring. So all you have to do is go to whatever pressure sensor that you're using and look at their diagram to make sure you get your wiring correct. All pressure sensors, are gonna have a five volt reference, which means you have to run five volts to number two. Your ground wire, which is also referred to as a sensor ground. This is not chassis, this is not battery. This is sensor ground. So this has to go to a sensor ground in the ECU. If you, wire, if you ground that to chassis, it will not work and you could burn your ECU up. So this is gonna to go to our ground reference on our ECU. And then our number three is just our normal signal that will run to our analog input. So pretty fairly simple. A lot of times that, that ground wire gets people confused on how to, how to uh, pin that. But remember guys, that is a sensor ground, not a chassis ground. And of course you do need a five volt output out of your ECU, which we have a big plug that has a bunch of five volts coming out of it. So that should be pretty easy to do. Uh, we got our plug here. So we just gotta wire up our plug get some wires, get some pins, and be good to go. All right, so what you guys are gonna need, some tools, some stripper, of course, some good wire, um, your plug. You gotta use a crimper, depending on what pins you're gonna use, and these come with <clears throat> pins already. And then I like to finish it up with some wire loom just to uh, keep the wire safe inside the engine bay. All right, we got our three wires here. So pull them through the firewall, and then Prepare yourself to see a mess. Boo! Wire mess. And honestly, it's more uh, organized than what you think. Um, I have a lot of these, and it's hard to see with the shadows and stuff, but I have a lot of like, this is my sensor ground plug, so all my sensor grounds go into here. Everything is labeled with tags and stuff, so I know where everything's at, but it gets a little messy, especially when you're trying to smash all this into the factory locations. But 
What we're gonna do is right now I have a pull-up resistor right here um, because it was on an analog input. So we shouldn't need the pull-up resistor because it's going to be digital. So we're gonna remove that. We're just gonna run our bump switch button uh, straight to our digital in. And on max ECU, you can actually tell it to run a pull-up and it'll do it all inside the ECU itself, which is really nice. So let's uh, cut all this mess and get her situated. All right, guys, so all we had to do, we had to come in here. We had to move our uh, dump valve. So this is our output. We didn't have to change anything here besides our active bump input. Since we used to be in analog input eight, we have to change that to digital input one. And then we had to go back to our um, inputs. And we had to move bump to digital input five volt pull up enabled, and then we had to remove it from AIN eight, which we already changed this to crankcase pressure once we get the sensor hooked up. So you gotta change a couple things in Max here. The cool thing about Max is it's super easy. Um, I did have a little bit of troubleshooting because my dump valve kept coming on. But when I went in here, I forgot that I had it A and B or C, and C was still digital eight which was active, so I kept turning my dump valve on. I was trying to figure out why, and that was why. So there's little things here, but the cool thing about Max ECU is you can literally come over here and see what's going on with your outputs. So clearly, you know, I saw 100% on the dump valve and I had to figure out what was triggering that, finally found it. And another cool thing is down here, you can actually run like a live log. So like when I hit trans brake, there's a trans brake, but here, I'll just do the dump valve. So you can see the dump valve coming on and off. That's the dump valve. Just one more thing I like about Max ECU. It's super easy to troubleshoot. Everything's right there, live data. Really, really nice. So now what I've got to do is pin our pressure sensor gauge, hook it up, and ready to go. Remember, five volts, ground, digital input. Well, analog input at this point. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have coolant pressure and crankcase pressure. So down here, our yellow is our crankcase. We only built less than a pound. We're only on 20 pounds, just doing some low boost pulls. And here you can see coolant pressure, six, seven, nothing crazy. Basically with coolant pressure, you wanna see it pretty, you don't wanna see crazy peaks or anything. I mean, here you can see eight, and then as the RPMs climbed, it actually drops because your water pump starts flowing better. But while you're in boost, if you start seeing crazy, like if this, if this went from six to like 20 or six to 25 within, you know, this RPM jump, you know, boost comes up and if that just followed it pretty much all the way up, uh, that's, that's bad. You gotta, you gotta head lift and um, so super excited that we have crankcase and coolant pressure. Crankcase and coolant pressure are both very vital to knowing what's going on with your motor. Coolant pressure, of course, typically will tell you if a head gasket is going or if you're just slightly lifting a head. And that can save a motor because if you know you're lifting a head gasket, um, you can go ahead and get that, even retorque it, see if that will work. And if it doesn't, replace a head gasket. If you guys are, if you have a blown head gasket or a lifted head gasket and you have water going into a, to a chamber, that can form extremely hot temperatures. It'll burn a piston up. It'll torch a cylinder head. You do not want to run a car on a leaky head gasket or even just a lifted head gasket. That's not ideal. You can burn stuff up that way. And then with crankcase pressure, of course, That'll tell you how much pressure you have in a crankcase. Uh, of course, with us, as you guys have followed, you know, going to a bigger vent, getting crankcase pressure out of the motor. You do not want high crankcase pressure. That'll blow seals out. You'll lose horsepower. You're blowing oil everywhere. It's not a good thing. I have a healthy short block right now. So if I start seeing crankcase pressure really go up over a course of different races, then I know my ring seal is starting to go. So what I'll do then is I'll actually do a leak down test to see how my rings are sealing. So all these things can just give you a warm and fuzzy knowing that your motor is healthy and then you can continue to go racing. 
Uh, once you start seeing these data points climb or stuff's not looking right, that's when you can start investigating. This can save a motor, guys. It's just like, you know, logging fuel pressure, logging oil pressure, logging these different things. It's just so you know you can look back at data and say, hey, oil pressure's looking funny or fuel pressure's looking funny. Then you know you got a problem. Your fuel pump's dying. Uh, your bearings are starting to go and oil pressure starts getting real zigzaggy. Then you know, or, or you got to change your oil. I always notice with oil pressure, I know when to change it because oil pressure will start getting super ziggy and I know that it's starting to break down. And when it starts doing that, it even has a lot of fuel in it or it's just not holding its strength. Um, so it's time to change. And as soon as I change, my oil pressure starts solid again. So kind of a telltale sign, like the oil pressure starts getting a little ziggy. Oil, oil is starting to break down and it's time to change it. I hope you guys learned something. Really easy to add a pressure sensor to your car and log it through your ECU. I highly suggest minimum oil pressure and fuel pressure. And I usually tell my customers, especially if you're trying to push a fuel system hard, you gotta have a fuel pressure sensor on there and that'll tell you what's going on with the pump. Um, and an oil pressure sensor, of course, it's nice to have, like I said, seeing if your oil's breaking down. But guys, that's not always gonna save your motor. I mean, if you have a catastrophic failure, like I did and I spun a bearing, my oil pressure looked fine all the way up until it spun the bearing. So it's just a, it's just a data point to look at. But I hope you guys learned something. Um, doing up pressure sensors are, is not difficult. It's three wires. It's really simple. <clears throat> and I'm super happy that we can look at crankcase and coolant pressure now. And I don't have to switch back and forth. But all right, guys, that's going to do it. I got to get the Thanksgiving dinner. I hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving. I appreciate it. Comment, like, subscribe, like, for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.